Hallelujah. We have come to worship the Lord, our Redeemer. He is our all and all. Father, we just bless you. We praise you and we thank you. As we come into your presence, we give you glory and we give you honor and we worship you. We thank you that you have allowed us to see a new day. We will be glad and rejoice in it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, 16th Street. I pray that you are having an amazing day. I pray that the grace of God has found you well. And so we would like to welcome you to our broadcast today. And we don't want to just welcome 16th Street. We welcome all of you. For those of you who are guests today, for those of you who are tuning in for the very first time, we want to welcome you and we encourage everybody from the east to the west. If you're watching today, go ahead and give us a shout out. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, We love to know where you are coming from. And I'm gonna try to peek at the screen, which is over here, so that I could see uh, some of the some of the comments that come up and so a good morning elder kirksey it is good to see you i see that the ashley's are watching and uh, let's see here uh we see uh, sister crosby is watching and so we're excited to see her also and sister bostic uh sister stephanie is good to uh, see you i i I can't see you but i see your i see your profile picture and so good to see you it's good to see you sister polydor um and welcome happy sabbath it's always good to see you uh brother richards all the way from egypt uh we feel privileged every time we see that you have tuned in it's good to see you elder Middleton. Um, Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to see you, Sister Woods. Welcome, welcome. So many of you. uh, Good morning. Happy Sabbath. We're glad to see each and every one of you. And I am hoping that I get to see you all from your cars this evening at 5 p.m. As you may or may not know, our education department has planned an amazing uh, graduation celebration. And for many of our graduates, this will be the only time that they have to walk across that stage. And so uh, we invite you to come. This is a drive in service. And so you get to drive in. You'll be able to hear the program from your cars. And so we're asking you to stay in your cars, but you can blow your horns as a sign of support. You can wave to me really good and you can give me a good virtual hug. Um, And so we're just excited. And I hope that you'll join us. A lot of work has gone into this program. And so um, did we put on the screen the a flyer that has all of the information. Uh, so, um, well, you all are past the RSVP uh, if you're a graduate, but this afternoon at 5 p.m. at the church, the church parking lot, and we are located at 1601 West 16th Street in San Bernardino, California, and that time is 5 p.m. Pacific time. So, we hope to see you there. Now, this um, coming week, we were all excited. We were supposed to host a COVID testing event. I got word from the county this week that they need to reschedule us. So it is postponed, but we will definitely keep you posted uh, and pray that we will be able to work something out so that we will be able to host this uh, testing event. Uh, If you've been keeping up with the news, you will see that We're around here breaking records everywhere with COVID. I think people have thought that maybe it went away. People were waiting for the second wave. Um, But I heard somebody say, but a wave is an up and a down. We're just up and up. And so uh, I want to encourage each of you to continue to wash your hands, continue to wear your face coverings, continue to practice social distancing, especially this evening when you're going to be so tempted to give somebody a hug or to get out your car. I want you to remember, remember, and I want you to continue to be safe. And we'll let you know uh, about the a COVID testing when we get another opportunity to uh, reschedule. I want you all to keep the Patillo family in prayer. Uh, Sister Patillo passed this week 
And so uh, she was a longtime member here at 16th Street. And so we want to keep them in prayer at um, and that God would comfort them during their time of loss. And then finally, I want to uh, remind you of the shift conference, formerly known as camp meeting. It will be taking place July 7th through the 11th. And so I think we're going to put up the we're going to put up the flyer. Uh, it'll be taking place July 7th through the 11th. You can see the speakers. Um, and so we won't be having our regular services here. They will be having an adult service. They'll be having a youth service and, um, They'll also be having a children's service. The youth and, and adult service will be taking place at 7 p.m. And the children's service will be at 6 p.m. And so begin even now to plan for that. And I know I said finally, but last but certainly not least, we are getting ready for VBS beginning this Monday. If you all are excited about VBS, then I need you to type in the comments your excitement. Give me an emoji. Give me a yay, a woohoo, a whoop whoop, whatever it is, but put it in the comments because we are excited about VBS. And so uh, you can register for VBS uh, with the link on your screen screen. Uh, this is where you register. And so we are going to get more information on how you can get all of the materials for this uh, event, but it begins at 530. It's virtual. Uh, so it'll be a virtual event. It begins at 530 this Monday. And I can't type right now. So I'm just giving you my whoop whoop right now. That being said, we are going to continue to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I want to welcome Elder Cole Hill. She is going to lead us in prayer. And then Brother DJ is going to lead us in worship. And then I'll be back with the word. Good morning, church family. Happy Sabbath. It's prayer time. All week I've had some words going around in my mind. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word just to take him at his word do you trust him do you believe him we are living in perilous times and you have to trust jesus you have to believe him this is the time to reflect and repent and reboot and come back to that place where you believe the word that god has given you i'm reminded of the scripture in second chronicles 7 14 if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. Seek my face, turn from their wicked ways and seek my face. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins. We need our lands forgiven. We need this nation forgiven. We need our sins forgiven. And this is a time where we need to trust in his word, believe in everything that he has said. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care if you don't have a job. I don't care if your family's in disarray. God said, if you trust him with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways when you acknowledge him, that he would direct your path. Let's depend and trust on that word. Let's believe in that word that he has given you. Whatever he has spoken in your heart today, we're going to take it to the Lord in prayer and we're going to stand on that promise and we're going to believe God. Get your mind and your heart centered on the word of God, centered on the mind of God that we can touch heaven this morning. Amen. Get your heart ready. He is a heart regulator and a fixer. And today we're going to ask the father to fix our hearts. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, O oh God. We come to you trusting your word. It's so sweet to trust in you, Lord. We take you at your word and we lift you up this morning, O oh God. We call on heaven to be our guard, to be our guide, to be our protection. Lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake, O oh God. Forgive us for where we've fallen short, O oh God, for where we've sinned over and over for our rebelliousness, O oh God for our selfishness, for our pride, Father God, for not trusting, for not believing. Oh God, we need you today, Lord. We lift you up because your name is higher than any other name. We lift up this nation today, oh God. We lift up this world today, oh God. We lift up the families who've lost loved ones to brutality. We lift up the families that have lost 
loved ones to COVID-19, oh God. We lift, Lord, we lift up, Father God, those who are sick and shut in. We lift up those, Father God, who have lost their way, Father, lost their faith, oh God. Lord, that don't know you, Father God, lead us, oh Father God. We break every yoke that keeps binding us, Father God, from the things that you have already told us, Lord. Help us to remember your word, Lord. If you said it, you meant it, and your word does not return it to you void, oh God. Lord, lift up 16th Street right now. Lift up San Bernardino right now. Lift up California right now. Lord, I'm asking in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would shake us and wake us and position us for the next move, Lord. This is not a moment, it's a movement, oh God. Not just with the protest, but in the church, oh God. You said that judgment would start at the house of God, Father. Lord, you are judging our hearts, judging our actions, Lord. Right now, today, Father God, those that are crying out to you, have mercy, oh God. We need more grace, oh God. More grace, oh God. We need healing in our body, healing in our mind, healing in our soul in the name of Jesus, oh God. We lift up our pastor, Dr. Andrea Trusty King, Father God. Lord, she's been consistent, Father God, calling on your name for healing and miracles and signs and wonders, oh God. Oh, move in this place, oh God. Touch her heart and her mind, Lord, as she brings the word today, Lord, that it will save somebody that hears her word today, oh God. Lord, we thank you for this day. We just praise you right now, oh God, for being God all by yourself. We praise you right now, oh God, because you are a man that cannot lie, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, if you said it, you meant it, it's coming forth, oh God, new beginnings, oh God, refreshing, oh God, let it rain, oh God, let it rain on our lives and clear away the dross, clear away the darkness, clear away the confusion, oh God, I rebuke Satan right now for everything he sent in, Lord, you said as the death angel passes, it will pass us by, oh God, and so I thank you that we're healed, we're saved, and we're delivered, we're set free in this place right now, in this moment right now, I Thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now because your blood, Father God, has covered us all. And love has conquered this situation, oh God. Lord, lift us up, Lord. I thank you for favor moving right now on the hearts and the mind of the people. I thank you that there's clarity right now in the hearts and the minds of the people. I thank you that there's healing right now in the bodies and the mind and the soul of the people that hear my voice, Lord. Let the spirit reign right now now in the name of Jesus. Let it rain down right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, and give us victory in all that we have asked for, oh God. Let your will be done because you, oh God, are a God that saves. You are God, are a God that heals. You, oh God, are a God that delivers. And I thank you for being God all by yourself. Give God a praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. God is good and we love you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 89, 13 declares, Thou hast a mighty arm and a strong hand, and high is thy right hand. Come on, let's give the mighty God a praise today. Come on.
mighty and he moves us forward. We have made it from March to June in the midst of a pandemic. Let's worship him.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going back. I'm moving forward. I pray that that is your prayer today, that we are moving forward. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We praise you. We thank you. We honor you. And Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit would fill us, that your Holy Spirit would guide us as we move forward. Lord, we bless you and we pray that you would saturate this place and this time together with your anointing, O oh God. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying and give us hearts to understand. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are moving forward today. We are continuing our series. God be like. And today we're talking about God being a promise keeper. Today we are talking about God being a promise keeper keeper. Now, as we uh, think about various uh, pairs, um, there's always, sometimes there's some kind of ri rivalry. Um, there was like the magic and the Larry Bird rivalry. I know I'm on the West Coast, and so I guess I know where you all stand. Um, two Lakers, LeBron and Kobe, or LeBron and Michael Jordan. There's always this beef trying to pit a uh, one versus the other biggie and Tupac. There's all kinds of beef that, uh, stand. And one of the beefs that, uh, sometimes creep up in Christianity is the, I don't know if it's beef, but we cause this rift between the God of the old Testament and the God of the new Testament. And we make like, they're two different people and sometimes they're at odds with one another. And if we're telling the truth, sometimes we feel some kind of way about the God in the old Testament, because sometimes uh, he does things that we don't understand that we don't like that seem cruel or mean or misogynistic or racist or all kinds of different things. And many people have levied these accusations at God. And I believe a part of the reason that is, is because we don't understand how God be like, we don't understand the character of God. And so today I want to talk a little bit about how he is a promise keeper and how uh, some of those covenants, agreements, and promises sometimes uh, mess up the way that we view our God. In the Bible, uh, there are at least three kinds of covenants. Uh, how many types of covenants did I say? Uh, I hope you typed in three. And uh, as you are doing so, the first kind of covenant is the vassal covenant. What kind of covenant? A vassal covenant. And a vassal covenant is a covenant or an agreement, a treaty. It's some kind of agreement that takes place between a king and his subjects. Sometimes it could be a greater king with a lesser king. But when they have this a vassal contract, this vassal covenant, it is built on obedience to specific terms. It is stipulated what the lesser person would bring to the, uh, bring to the agreement, bring to the table of the King. And there were curses for those servants who violates the rights of the King. This was a conditional covenant. Another type of covenant is a kinship covenant. And uh, that is between two equal parties. You see this in a marriage covenant. You see this with, um, 
You see this when you're buying land, uh, you have a certain amount of money that one person brings and there's a land worth that. And so it's kind of an equal uh, contract or covenant. And so uh, there's the kinship covenant. And then finally, and this is my favorite, there's the grant covenant. This is a promise of a king to his servants. Uh, this uh, is an unconditional covenant and it requires nothing of the servants. This covenant flows out of the goodness of the great King's heart. And so it, doesn't have any curses uh, connected to it. If um, if somebody, if the lesser person doesn't do what they're supposed to do, the king isn't going to curse them. He is there to bless them because of their faithfulness of or good deeds. And so in the Bible, we see all kinds of uh, examples of these covenants. But it feels to me that uh, the grant covenant is one of God's favorite covenants. We see this with a Noah. God made a covenant with Noah in Genesis chapter nine, verse 11. Uh, God is talking to Noah and he says, and this is a covenant to all living things. It says, thus, I will establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. So God makes this covenant. He doesn't require Noah or his descendants, the animals to do anything. They don't have to be good. They don't have to pledge their allegiance. This is just out of the goodness of God's heart. He says, listen, I vow to you that I am going to protect you and make sure that a flood never destroys the whole earth. That my friends is a grant covenant. Not only did God make a grant covenant with Noah, he made one with uh, Abraham. He comes to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 uh, and he says, uh, get out of your country. Uh, this I'm reading verse one, get out of your country from your family and your father's house to a land that I'm going to show you. And then God tells him what he's going to do when he gets there. He says, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I'm going to bless those who bless you. And I'm going to curse those who curse you and in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And so here again, this is a grant covenant. God is saying, I just want to bless you. I just want to make you great. And so people who bless you, I'm going to bless them too. And people who curse them, they're going to have me to deal with. Once again, this is a grant covenant. There are no requirements. There's just promises. And, and what Abraham did have to believe God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, if Abraham did not believe God, there were no curses uh, meted out to Abraham. Uh, he just missed out on some of the great blessings that God has for him. As a matter of fact, because God was in a covenant with Abraham, uh, he then was on Abraham's side. And there were times where Abraham messed up where Abraham was out there lying and Abraham was out there pimping his wife. He pimped his wife out to the king of Pharaoh. But because God is contracted to bless Abraham, when this man has Abraham's wife, the Bible says that folks started getting sick and things started jumping off against Pharaoh. And so finally Pharaoh recognizes what happens and they're like, yo, I didn't know he said it was his sister. And God is like, I know that's why I didn't let you touch her, but give the man back his wife. And so they send her back and they give gifts or whatever. Abraham was wrong, but God was in this agreement with Abraham. And so he had to protect Abraham. We see this happen again and again, even when Abraham was up to his same crazy tricks, even when they treated the slave Hagar wrong and she runs away. God says, you got to go back. You got to go back because the blessing is in Abraham's house. As you, uh, as 
as you bless Abraham, then I am going to bless you. There was this covenant relationship that God had that he was just going to bless the people who were connected in a good way to Abraham. And because of that, even when Abraham went to war, he was going to win. He was going to win. There was a time where there were four uh, nations. They came together and uh, a group of five nations tried to defeat them and they could not defeat them. Five nations on their own home turf could not defeat these four nations. And they messed around and grabbed Abraham's nephew. And so now Abraham got to be in it. And because Abraham's in it, now God is in it. Why? Because he's a promise keeper. And so Abraham goes and fights against these four nations with just the servants of his house. Abraham and God were able to do what five nations could not do. And why? Because God was a promise keeper. This wasn't even God's fight, but this was God's man. And so God showed up, not because Abraham was good, but because God was good. I don't know about you, but I, I would love to get into one of these grant covenants with God. God made a grant covenant with David and he said, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to build you a house and I'm going to make sure that your legacy stands and that there always be somebody on the throne. He continues to bless David. And once again, um, when, when David messes up, God did not curse him. As a matter of fact, one of the most baffling verses to me is found in a second, second, Samuel chapter 12 of uh, verse eight. This is where, um, David messes up with Bathsheba and God sends Nathan to talk to him. And by messes up, uh, I mean that he got his boy's wife pregnant and then arranged his boy to be killed. Now God is in covenant with this man and he out here wilding out. He out here doing crazy stuff. And so God sends his messenger, go talk to my boy, David, and let him know, I know, and stop all of this nonsense. And these are the words in verse eight. It says, I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping. I gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. If it had been too little, I would have given you much more. God is like, yo, we got a thing going on. We are in covenant. We have an agreement that I got you. I got your back. I'm going to bless you. So if you needed something, you should have came to me instead of stealing from your friend's your friend's house. If you needed something, I got you. I am covenanted to bless you. And so uh, what's going to happen? I wonder as I'm reading, I'm thinking, OK, now David has done it. Uh, are the curses going to fly? Is God going to get him? Uh, verse 13 tells us. So David says to Nathan, verse 13. So David says to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord has also put away your sin. You shall not die. Now, y'all talking about the God of the Old Testament? Listen, he's rich in mercy and he is doing this stuff when he's in this grand covenant. He is a promise keeper. He is a covenant keeping God. And so he's like, listen, I know that we're in covenant together. I know that I said that I was going to bless you and that you were going to have a, somebody sit on your throne. I can't take you out right now. Uh, so here God again says you're not going to die because they were in relationship. Now, David was connected to God and God was connected to David. God made this covenant, not because David was good, but because God was good. God made this covenant with Noah, not because Noah was good, but because God was good. God made the covenant with Abraham, not because Abraham was good, but because God was good. And he's a promise keeper. This grant covenant, yo, if I could get in one of these with God, that would be a good thing. And so the grant covenant, it, it feels like the choice of God, but something went tragically wrong when God offered a grant covenant to the children of Israel. Something went 
drastically wrong when they got out of slavery. He delivered them from Egypt and then he wants to give them one of these great, good, amazing covenants. Go with me to uh, Exodus chapter 19 verses five and six. Now, therefore, the Bible says, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So God gives them this opportunity. Let them come into communion with me. I want them to be my priests. Everybody, a whole kingdom of priests. That means that they can come before my presence. That means that we're in deep relationship together. That means they can see my face. I want a whole nation of people people who will come before me, who will be in intimate relationship with me, and then will take my love and give it to the world. I want to hook you all up. And so, of course, who's going to turn down something as nice as that? So the people are like, yes, great. Tell God, tell God, yes. And so uh, they tell God, yes. And so God uh, says, okay, tell the people to consecrate themselves and I'm going to come down in all of my glory. And then he begins to come down and he shares the 10 commandments and there's lightning and thundering and the earth is shaking and the people are tripping. And they're like, listen, you know what? I know, I know we said that we would be kingdom of priests. I know we said that we wanted to be in this relationship with God. Uh -uh, forget it. Uh, uh, we know, you know, he came down and, and he was allowing us to see his glory, but it's too much. We don't want it. Listen, we're afraid. We don't want to be that close to God. So instead of a relationship, Moses, you go up there and talk to him. You have the relationship and you just bring us the rules. We can't uh, do this one-on-one -on -one with God. We don't want to do all of this. We don't want to, we rather you just talk to him and you bring down uh, whatever he says. You bring down the rules. Y'all had a relationship. Just give us the rules. And so they told Moses to go. And so Moses began to meet with God face to face. Moses began to glow. Moses began to have this relationship with God where they got to bargain. And there were times where the people, I mean, they couldn't keep a little bit of the covenant, not for a second. Like God couldn't even finish writing the contract out and they were breaking it. They did. They, they're supposed to be his people and to have no other gods and while they're still writing this out, they're down there having an orgy and worshiping a golden calf. And God is like, for real, are y'all, are y'all serious right now? And so, uh, and because they chose not to be in that grant covenant, they wanted a different kind of arrangement, uh, through a series of very unfortunate events. Israel eventually got down to a vassal covenant. They got down where God had to begin to say, y'all got to do this, 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 this. And so much so that, and, and this is how they know it was the vassal covenant because there were other, um, they found other countries and other peoples of that time had these vassal covenants and they had like uh, preambles and historical context and all of the things that had blessings and curses. Uh, it had the stipulations you had to follow or curses would come to you. This is what the people requested. This was not God's heart. This was not what God wanted for his people. He wanted to be in deep relationship. He wanted any of them, all of them to be able to come into his presence. He wanted them all to be in relationships and not just get stuck on rules. But they requested a different arrangement. They rejected uh, uh, this thing going the way it was supposed to. And so as a result, God appears like a jerk. But that was not his plan a that, that was not what God wanted to do. Even where, uh, it, it feels like God is killing whole, uh, races of people, the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites. That was not God's original plan. God literally told them, listen, I'm going to send hornets. I'm going to drive the people out. Uh, it's going to be animals. It's going to be stuff. It was going to be a peaceful transition. God already told them this. God 
God's heart was to bless this people and to bless the world through them. It was not God's heart to just be destroying people and all of this kind of stuff. But what happened is when he got in this covenant with this crazy, wicked, stiff neck, hard headed people, then that means that he had to do some crazy stuff because he was in this covenant. And because it was a vassal covenant, the thing happened when you didn't do what you were supposed to do on your end, then there were consequences and, and they were supposed to die. And there were many times where God is like, move over Moses, I'm about to take them out because they have broken the covenant over and over and over and over again. The thing that they said they were gonna do, they're not doing, they're not doing. And so um, there were times where God is trying to do a peaceful uh, transition, but now they're in, they are in uh, battles and, and now they, God is coming against nations because those nations are coming against them. Listen, this covenant thing was so important. Joshua got in a covenant with a group of people called the Gibeonites and they had completely lied. God said, don't get into covenant with any of the nations that I'm going to drive out. Don't get into covenant. But these people decided that they were going to, uh, hide, disguised themselves and they acted like they came from far away and they came with moldy bread and torn up clothes. And they were like, this bread was fresh when we left home. I don't know. Oh, the journey was so bad. Our clothes were brand new when we left home. But, and so Joshua, he didn't talk to God and he just got into this, uh, he got into this treaty. They lied, but because they were in this treaty, they were, covenanted to protect these people. It was a vassal treaty though. They were like, we'll be your servants. Just don't kill us. But as a result of being in that treaty, there were times when people would come for the Gibeonites and now Israel has to go and fight the Gibeonites battle because they're in this treaty. As a matter of fact, uh, Saul decided, you know, what? I'm sick of these people. We should have never been in no treaty with them. And so he's like, I know how to deal with this. I'm going to just wipe them all out. But the problem was. They were in treaty. They were covered by the promises and protection of the treaty. So when Saul wiped them out, when, when Saul decided to become an enemy to the Gibeonites who were now in this treaty with Israel and with God, now God has to, God has to deal with Israel because they broke the treaty. And David is realizing there's a famine going on. He's like, God, what is happening? Why is this famine taking place? He was like, cause which are what Saul did to the Gibeonites. There was a treaty. God is a promise keeper. He keeps his word. He honors his word. And so sometimes even because uh, even things that don't feel right, that don't look right because you are connected, um, because you are connected in treaty in covenant, then a God had to go along with some things. And that's why the Bible says that, that there was a veil over God's heart. Some people look at some of the things that happened in the Old Testament and say, man, God, God seems like a jerk. God don't seem right. But what they don't understand is that was not God's heart, but he was working with a bad situation. Um, and so uh, even, even uh, when, even when uh, they are uh, going through all of these different things, God tries to show his heart. He tries to show how good he is. Like he gave them the Sabbath. They're slaves. They have a slave mindset. They could not imagine being one-on-one -on -one with the great God almighty. They could not imagine being able to sit on the high places of the earth. And that is why they turn the deal down. But God is like, listen, okay, y'all want to be slaves. I want to act like slaves, but I'm going to still give you a taste of freedom. And so six days you'll labor, but on the seventh day, that will be your day of rest. And not only will you rest, I want, if you get servants, I want them to rest. I want your kids to rest. I don't want to see your ox and, um, your, your bulls and whatnot, uh, going up and down your fields. They get to rest. Let everything 
rest. God is giving them just a little bit of royalty. He's giving them, he's showing them his heart. He's showing them how good he is. He's like, listen, you honor your uh, parents, then I'm going to honor you and give you long life in the land. He's trying to show how good he is. There were some things that got him tied up, but he still allowed some of the pieces of his glory, some of the pieces of his goodness to show forth. Now, the reason that I mentioned this, because uh, that second rate covenant, and please know the old covenant is second rate. Uh, Paul calls it in second Corinthians chapter three, he calls it the ministry of death, a ministry of condemnation. He said, if the ministry of death could be that glorious, imagine what this new covenant would look like because God, even in the face of this old covenant, which was not his heart, which was not what he wanted. He gave them like a little trailer, like, but soon a new covenant is coming in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse six. Uh, we see where, uh, God says, um, there's coming a time where I'm not just going to circ where you all are not just going to circumcise yourselves, your body on the outside. But it says the Lord, your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord, your God with all your heart and soul that you may live. Even in the text of the old covenant, God is letting them know it's not going to be like this always, but there is going to come a time where a new covenant is going to rise up. And so Jeremiah and Ezekiel began to talk about this new covenant, this new promise. And guess what? The new covenant is not a vassal covenant. It is not a, uh, a kinship covenant. It is a grant covenant. You all want to read it? Good. Let's go. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31. It says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, my covenant, which they broke, though I was a husband to them, though I was faithful to them. Verse 33, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their hearts and on their minds and write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. And so here he begins to say, and there's one more verse. Um, we're missing verse 34. Um, and so they're not going to be able to put it on the screen, but I want to read it to you anyway. Uh, verse 34 of chapter uh, 31. It also says, we keep going. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man, his brother saying, know the Lord for they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them says the Lord for I will give for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. Can you imagine God is like, listen, y'all bad talk to me enough. You all have been faithless enough. I am coming with a new covenant. And in this new covenant, you're not going to have to worry about Moses or anybody else coming into my presence, getting a word from me and then bringing it back. Everybody's going to know me from the least to the greatest, from the youngest to the oldest. Everybody is going to have access to me. Everybody is going to have an opportunity to be a part of a kingdom of priests. Everybody is going to have a part uh, to be a holy nation. Everybody is going to be able to be in my presence. And I am not going to write my laws on stones, but I am going to write it on your mind and on your heart. We're going to be in deep relationship. And what am I going to do with your sins? I will remember them no more. I will forgive your sins and remember them no more. No curses. Hello, somebody, no condemnation. God is saying y'all can, y'all can hold on to this 
old covenant if you want to, but I'm going to make a new one that shows who I am. I'm going to make a new one that is going to not be so much focused on rules, but it's going to be focused on relationship. I'm going to make a new covenant. So even if you mess up, I'm not, I'm not going to have to kill you. I can just forgive you and remember your sin no more. And I can lead you. I can put my spirit on the inside of you and grow you new covenant, grant covenant. Listen, I'm trying to tell you, I want to get in on one of those grant covenants. So imagine my elation as I read about Jesus, the Christ son of God. He was the seed of Abraham. He was fulfilling Abraham's grant covenant. He was the son of David. He was fulfilling David's grant covenant. And he was the one who was going to establish the new covenant. And that is why uh, when they gathered around the communion table, he said, this blood is the new covenant. This ratifies the new covenant right before Jesus died. He let them know this is the new covenant. And I don't know about you, but that excites me because that means that we're in on the grant covenant. That means that God is going to write on our hearts and on our minds. That means that God is going to teach us. That means that we don't have to wait till the weekend to hear what the pastor is talking about, to hear what God is saying. But God will talk to us right here. And now. God will talk to us on a Tuesday at three o'clock in the morning. God will talk to us in the midnight hour when we're all by ourselves. God will talk to us and we don't have to wait till we grow up. We don't have to wait till we get old. We don't have to wait. God will talk to us as a child. I remember there were times uh, I remember when we were in Valley Fellowship Church. That was a a good couple of years ago. And my daughter, she just was looking. She was a baby, a toddler. She was just looking. She was just Oh, oh, she's just looking and I'm like, what are you looking at? She was like, there's angels, there's angels all over the place. God shows up to young people. God shows up to kids. And he said, listen, in them last days around that new covenant, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. The sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Your old men, your young men, uh, uh, they're going to dream dreams and see visions. I'm coming to a place where I'm calling you out of darkness and into the marvelous light, where you will be a chosen generation, where you will be priests and a holy nation that I am going to get back to my heart what I had for you. And that is why it is so important for us to understand that we are under the new covenant. So this means this is going to mess with you a little bit. This means that if you don't pay your tithe, you will not be cursed with a curse. That's old covenant. There's no, there's no curses connected to the new covenant. I know, I know, I know, I know. And let me tell you why this might hurt you. Let me tell you why this might be hard for you. The same reason that Israel rejected the offer of the grant covenant because they had a slave mentality. L listen, I, I ain't mad at you. I'm, I'm the daughter of a former slave too. Uh, and many of us are wrestling with slave mentality. Not only that, uh, most of the denominations that we see today came up, rose up from either slaveholders or former slaves. Real talk. Most of the denominations, listen, slavery will mess with your mind, especially when God is calling you to royalty. It'll mess with you. And, and even today we have a saying, if, if, if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. The devil is a lie. And that's why Israel could not receive this grant covenant. That's why they said, no, no, just go get the rules. And they thought that they were switching masters from Pharaoh to now Yahweh. But God was saying, no, I'm not looking for slaves. I'm looking for priests. I'm looking for friends. I'm looking for people who would be in relationship with me instead of just following rules from me. Hello, somebody. And that's why Jesus had to bring all the disciples and say, yo, listen, 
The slave stuff got to end. No longer are you my slave. No longer are you slaves. You are now my friends. He said, because a slaves don't know what the master is doing. And see, God has given us a Holy Spirit. God wants to reveal everything that he is doing. And so please don't miss this. God has called us to this grant covenant. God has called us to this new covenant. That means where it says that I will remember your sins no more. God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it and shall he not do it? Has he spoken it and will he not bring it to pass? If God says that under the new covenant, I will forgive your sins and remember them no more. Why do you think that he is still holding against you something you did 10 years ago, 20 years ago? You are not believing the new covenant. You are still thinking like a slave, but God is saying, stop with the slave. It's time for you to rise and be a saint. God is saying, I want to change the relationship. You are a part of the new covenant and in the new covenant that we get through Christ Jesus. And, and Hebrews tells us it's a better covenant. That's why the Bible says there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us now we have peace with God. The Bible tells us that even when sin abounds, grace does much more about. Why? Because we're in the new covenant. That means that just like David, uh, just like God told David, he said, if you need some, ask me, don't go out here and, and do some crazy stuff. I got you. It's the same with us. That's what happens when you are in this grant covenant, when you are in this relationship with God. Temptation is fulfilling our legitimate needs in an illegitimate manner. And so we go out and we do things because we don't really believe that God has us. We don't really believe that the Bible, what the Bible says, where it says that he has great and precious promises to give us all that we need for life and godliness. We don't really believe that God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. We don't really believe that as far as the East is from the West, that's how far God removes moves our sin from us. But if we will just believe what he said, if we will just walk and, and operate like we're in the new covenant, our lives will completely change. Hebrews chapter eight, verse six, it says, but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry in as much as he is also the mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. I mean, don't look in the old Testament and see some of those promises and wish they applied to you. Listen, you are the recipient of better promises, a better ministry of a better covenant, because it is built on the blood of Jesus. It is built on Christ, our savior on Jesus Christ, our liberator. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited about being connected in a grant covenant. I'm excited about not worrying about curses anymore. I'm excited uh, that, that when my car breaks down, I don't have to worry if God is cursing me. I'm excited that I am in this covenant with uh, the Lord so that I can boldly show up before his throne of grace and ask for help in my time of need. I'm excited to be a part of the new covenant. Are you excited? That's why Galatians five verse one says, stand therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. The son has made us free. We should be free indeed and not get entangled again in a vassal 
covenant, not get entangled again in trying to work and prove our worth, not getting entangled again in some of that old stuff. Listen, I want no part of it. I want what Christ has given to me. And that means that uh, uh, my enemies and uh, the enemy of my soul is God's enemy. And that's why the Bible tells us, and listen, people are not your enemy. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And guess what? God said he's going to crush Satan under your feet shortly. God says that he is giving you power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Guess what? The Bible says that he will always cause you to triumph through Christ Jesus more than a conqueror. And I know I keep saying these things because I want them to sink into your head. I want them to sink into my head that God has made this covenant for us. He is contractually obligated to bless us. And listen, I want to stay in the covenant relationship with this great God. I don't know about you, but I need to stay in this covenant relationship with this great God. Many of us have given up relationship and said, I'll just stick to the rules. And so we do this and we do that. We eat this and we eat that, or we don't eat that. We don't go here. We don't do this. And we think that will be enough instead of having a relationship. My sisters and my brothers, no, no, don't go back. God wants to write his law on your heart and on your mind. God wants to be an intimate communion with you. God wants to give you access. It says that you're seated in heavenly places through Christ Jesus. It says that every spiritual blessing is yours through Christ Jesus. Do not throw that away trying to keep rules. Figure out what this relationship thing is today. I'm closing. I'm closing. And my call to action is for each and every one of us to get into covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, he says that if you're born again, then you are born into the family of God, that you get your inheritance. You are connected with him and ask him to have his spirit fill you to write his words and his laws on your head and on your heart. Listen, condemnation, that's not your portion. Uh, 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 death and destruction or hell, that's not your portion. That's not for you. Curses, that's not for you. God is not doing that for you. What he wants to do is bless you. That's why the Bible says all the promises in Christ are yes. And in him, amen. He says, I am contracted. I love you so much. I want you to be connected to me. And as we go through life, I am going to bless you. I'm going to keep you. I am going to protect you. And I am going to grow you. I will chasing you. Listen, when my kids were born, you know, you, you hold this baby and you promise you make a covenant. Listen, I am going to love you with every bit of me. I am going to make sure you get educated. I'm going to keep you safe from the things of the world. I'm going to make sure that you have clothing and food. I'm going to watch over you. And no matter what you do, I mean, you're making this commitment at the beginning. You're looking at them in love. It's just an outpour of love. You don't know what they're going to do. You don't know if they're going to grow up and hate you. You don't know if they're going to grow up and steal your TV while you are gone at work. You don't know if they're going to raise their hand to fight you. You don't know, but you're saying, listen, I am in it to win it and I'm going to bless you. And even when they do rise up and do some crazy stuff, yes, you grow them. Yes, you chasing them, but your love, your protection, your watch care does not change. You continue to watch over them. And it, and Jesus said, if we being evil, know how to give good gifts to our children. How much more, ha, glory to God, how much more this great God would he not give us, uh, in one version it says, give good gifts to his children. And in another version it says, give us the Holy Spirit, which is one of the greatest gifts of all, glory to God. And so today, 
There may be some of you who have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. There may be some of you who have not gotten into relationship with him. And now that you're understanding this whole covenant thing, it's like, who wouldn't? And today he's calling you. Today he's saying that he wants you to be his child. And so if today your answer is yes, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for inviting me into covenant with you. Thank you for seeing me the way I am and not being turned off, but calling me into new life with you. Father, I say yes. I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. I accept Jesus as mediator of the new covenant. I accept the new covenant. I want to be in relationship with you. Would you write on my heart and on my mind your law? Would you uh, uh, teach me who you are? Would you grow me? Would you take me as I am, but not leave me like this, but make me into who you have predestined me to be? Father, would you forgive my sins and would you remember my iniquity no more? Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you and we praise you. We receive this as done. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Those of you who are already a part of the new covenant, but weren't acting like it or didn't know it. It's time for you to make a change. Also begin to rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And the thing about uh, a covenant, a lot of times uh, it comes by way of contract. And so uh, sometimes there are things you have access to, but if you don't read the contract, then you aren't going to know uh, what it all includes. And so I invite you to begin to read what the new covenant includes. I invite you to begin to read what Christ is calling us to and calling us for spend time in his word. And for those of you who have accepted Christ uh, for the first time or the first time in a long time, I would love to know about it. Heaven has written it down, but we would love to know about it. And if there's something that we can do to help you grow in your relationship, we would love to do it. So tell you what, if you would text the word Christ, to five, four, two, four, four. We will send out to you, um, something that will help you with the first seven days of this new relationship that you have with Christ Jesus. And so that, uh, text the word Christ to five, four, two, four, four. We want to know about your decision. We want to praise God for your decision. And we want to give you some resources that will help you in this decision. Oh, I'm just so excited about this new covenant. I am so excited. So guess what? I'm not going to guilt you. You will not be cursed with the curse if you decide not to give on today. But God simply says, give and it'll be given to you. Press down, shaking together and running over. God says that if you decide to become a sower, that he's going to give you seed. He said, I give seed to the sower and He continues his blessing as you continue to read uh, that whole verse. It talks about that you'll have abundance and you will abound in everything. You'll have all sufficiency for everything you need. And so you can't beat God giving but it is sure fun to try. And so we want to give you an opportunity to share in this ministry. We want to give you an opportunity to become a sower. And so we're going to play our video and that'll uh, allow you to know ways that you can give. Listen, you don't have to, you, nothing bad is going to happen to you. But uh, if you decide to give, God says that I'm going to give right back to you. Press down, shaking together and running over. Something good will be coming your way. So if you want in on this, then here's some ways that you can give. Some of you are asking how you can give and support this ministry. Well, we're glad you asked. There are three ways you can give. You can give by text. For further instructions, text the word GIVE to 909-963-0020. You can also give on our website at 16adventist.org. You can go to our homepage and click the Give button for your options. 
If you'd like to mail in your gift, you can use one of our postage paid giving envelopes or you can mail your own envelope to P.O. Box 7040, San Bernardino, California, 92411. You can drop it in the mail and it will come to our secure post office box. Thank you so much for your support and generosity. We pray that God blesses you richly. Hallelujah, praise the Lord and thank you. As we close, Father, I pray that you would seal the commitments that we have made. We thank you for those who have decided to give. Father, I pray that you would bless them abundantly as you have promised to do. Father, I pray that you would allow us to see you in all of your glory and all of your goodness. Father, I pray that you would sweeten our relationship with you. And God, we confess where we have exchanged rules for relationship. We want no more of that. Father, we want to be in relationship and communion with you. Would you allow us to hear your voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Would you give us the heart to follow you? And Father, would you allow us and show us and teach us how to bless you at all times because we want to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. I pray that you have a wonderful rest of the Sabbath, and I pray that we will see you from afar in your cars this afternoon at 5 p.m. at the church 1601 West 16th Street in San Bernardino, California. God bless you all. I love you so much and pray to see you soon.